Hello everyone, this is The Question, and this is going to be my reading log video for our, the time period of March 2024 through June 2024. Trying to get these, video, these reading logs out more often, but obviously that has not been the case. And uh, some of these volumes I've already unhauled, so I decided to do this video in Tear Maker, so that way I could still show the covers even though I don't have some of these in my collection. So let's get right into the video. Okay, so we are going to have the kind of normal categories here. We got S, A, B, C, D. I don't have anything in F, so I went ahead and just got rid of the F uh, category here because I didn't have anything that I just absolutely hated. And then here is a list of everything that I read in, these, uh, in this time period, uh, not counting volume one. So if I just read volume one of a series, I didn't put it on here. This is just either one shots, complete series or series that I read multiple volumes and then dropped. So quite a decent amount. So we are going to start off with Miss Kuzakabe and Waltz, which are two Shuzo Oshimi one shots. These are not available in print normal means. They, I think Denp Denpo usually only sells these at conventions or through Twitter sales, which is how I got my two copies. And unless you're like an Oshim Oshimi hardcore fan, you you know, the, these are probably like his most lesser uh, known works. Miss Kuzukabe was probably the worst Shuzo Oshimi thing I read, I've ever read, but still, I still enjoyed it as an Oshimi fan. I, I'm going to put it in the C category. I didn't hate it or anything. Uh, Waltz I like quite a bit more. I'm going to put that in B. Um, typical kind of Shuzo Oshimi themes of uh, gender identity, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, like I said, Worth reading if you're an Oshimi fan, otherwise you can skip those. Next up we have Her Frankenstein. This is a newly uh, published in English work from the 80s, and this is published by Living the Line under their new Smudge imprint. Uh, this one is a really good horror uh, one-shot. I'm going to put that in the B category. Next up we have Scribbles Volume 2, uh, hardcover by Keoro Mori. Uh, if you don't know, I Keo Mori, probably my favorite manga artist. I love the way that she draws women, especially, but people in general. Just a great manga artist. And uh, they're up to volume three of these hardcover art books of hers, but I've been kind of reading these slowly. I'm going to, well, not reading, looking at them slowly. I'm going to put this in the S category. Uh, really enjoyed this one. On every page, besides just showing art, it kind of gives a little paragraph of background information of why she drew. Um, of what she's drawing in that picture. So well worth reading if you're a fan of manga art. Uh, I'm going to put that in the S category. Next we have Ladies on Top. I read all six volumes of this Steamship series. This is my first Steamship series. I didn't know too much what to expect other than it was probably going to be on the spicier side. And uh, this is actually like a cute office romance about reversing kind of your traditional gender roles. We have our main male character here who has trouble in his relationships and he finds out that he really wants a, a partner who's going to be more assertive, more take charge. And then we have kind of a shy, uh, this, our shy female main uh, lead who is kind of the opposite. She's been having trouble in her relationships and she realizes that she wants to be the take charge one. So really cute series. Uh, it is a little spicy, but not nothing, you know, nothing too bit, nothing too crazy. But uh, yeah, this was a really enjoyable series. I really enjoyed it. Glad I picked this one up. Um, I'm going to put this one in the B category. Next up, we have Silver Spoon. This is a 15 volume series. I read all 15 volumes. This is by the same creator as Full Metal Alchemist. Um, and yeah, this was just a really enjoyable high school series about our main character here who is really great at school but doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. So he ends up enrolling into this farming high school where they teach, uh, where the majority of the students are either a part of farming families or want to get into the animal industry, into the farming industry. And so he kind of just, with his smarts, makes his way, makes friends. And um, it's a lot of giving you information about running a farm. There's a lot of that in there, which, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting, but 
very interesting info. And uh, yeah, just a really entertaining series, large cast of characters. All the characters are really interesting. They kind of get their own little spotlights here and there. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed Silver Spoon. So I'm going to put that in the A category. Okay, so next we have yamada and the Seven Witches. I read the first five volumes of this series. I think it's 28 volumes long. This is one that I dropped after five volumes. I didn't know too much what to expect about this one. This is a high school comedy about a boy uh, who with one of his female classmates, they fall down the stairs, they end up switching places, and he finds out that he can switch places with anyone by kissing them. So this is a lot of comedy and hijinks focused humor and that just is not really my thing so i gave it a good shot like i said i gave it five volumes just didn't really connect with me i didn't hate it or anything um i'm it's it's probably a good series if you're into that stuff but yeah just the humor didn't didn't get me um so i'm gonna put that one in the c category and then unfortunately the same thing here with Doro Hidoro. Dorohi Doro was one where I really expected to love this series. This is by Kyu Hayashida. I had only read, I read, I think, the first couple volumes of Die Dark, and I really enjoyed it. And um, this is another one, just the the art I enjoyed. Um, it was a little muddier than Die Dark. Obviously, this is her older series. But uh, but yeah, just the, the storytelling, kind of the vibe of the story just never grabbed me. So I made it through the first three volumes of the series and then uh, ended up uh, dropping it. So uh, there's Doro Hidoro. And next up, we have the first, so you're gonna see on this list, I read a ton of Gekiga or kind of alternative manga, older manga during this time. I have a bunch of this in my collection and I probably only read about half of it previously. So I, during one of the months, I really wanted to make a focus on reading through a bunch of the Gekiga stuff that I had in my collection. And so first off here, we have Bloody Stump Samurai. This is from the 60s, and it's published in English by Retrofit, Retrofit Comics, which we don't get a lot of manga from them. And uh, this one is a story about discrimination against kind of an outcast community in Japan. And like a lot of these alternative or Gekiga mangas, the translator is Ryan Holmberg. He is a big name in that in the manga industry as far as getting a lot of these lesser known or older manga works released in English. So I'm gonna put this one in the C category. Um, but I did enjoy this one. And next up, we have a one-shot. If you watched my Unhaul video, you probably... I talked a little bit about Taking Care of God. Just a really goofy one-shot about a bunch of aliens taking or showing up in the skies of this world and then dropping off a bunch of elderly aliens onto the planet. So just a very goofy one-shot. This one, just nothing about it grabbed me. I, I didn't find it very interesting at all. I'm going to put this one in the D category. Next up, we have a short story collection. This is Nude Model. This is by the creator of Blue Period. I have not read that series yet, but I do really enjoy short story collections. And this one was pretty forgettable, probably, you know, one of the more forgettable uh, short story collections that I've read. I'm going to put this one in the C category. It's just a one, you know, it's just a small volume, so I'm going to hold on to it. I'll probably, maybe once I've read Blue Period, I will give it another look. But um, at least for now, pretty skippable short story, uh, short stories in there. Next up, we have Bat Kid. This is, uh, so Bat Kid was the first serialized baseball manga in Japan back in the 1940s. So this just got released in English by Bubbles. And again, Ryan Holmberg is a translator. A nice essay in the back kind of talking a little bit about the history of the series and so as far as the actual manga inside goes it's fine it's a fine kind of you know very early sports manga but the overall package and the you know kind of essays inside kind of make it what it is so i'm going to put this one in the b category next up we have Another one shot here, we have My Gemini. This is a mystery series about two twins here who for, friend, who for friends, who for fun like to switch places and one of them uh, ends up dying. So this, uh, their best friend here has to try to figure out what went on and uh, try to figure out which one is alive and which one uh, died. So this one was a really good mystery series, a mystery one shot. I'm gonna put that one in the B category. There is a uh, another volume in the same imprint. So Picture Box did this Tencent manga imprint, and I'm pretty sure 
this uh, this volume here, Last of the Mohicans, and then the Tezuka work, Mysterious Underground Men, a lot harder to find than this Last of the Mohicans volume, uh, are the only two releases I think we got in English under that imprint. I think they didn't sell too well, so they canceled it. Uh, Last of the Mohicans here is based on the uh, original story, and uh, this is a manga from the 70s, so very slapsticky in its content. The artwork is very very weird and very out there so um i enjoyed this one but this is definitely uh not one that everyone needs to run out and pick up if you're looking for some older manga i'd say this is probably one of the lesser ones but it is fairly cheap to find uh next up we have the three yoshiharu suge uh, hardcovers that drawn and quarterly has been releasing they're planning on releasing seven of these hardcovers kind of going in chronological order of suge's work and so um, these first two kind of start off more standard narrative storytelling, showing, you know, kind of stuff going on, more slice of life uh, storytelling. And then this third volume here, we start getting a lot more surrealist, uh, less straightforward storytelling. So The Swamp is the one of, that I enjoyed the most. So I'm going to put The Swamp in the A category. And then I'm also going to put Red Flowers in the A category. Um, I really enjoyed those two. And again, these are really nice releases by Drennan Quarterly. Um, and then the third one, which is uh, Nejushiki, I think is how you pronounce that. Uh, this one I enjoyed quite a bit less. I'm going to put this one in the C category. Like I said, a little more surrealist, a little less straightforward storytelling. I didn't enjoy that quite as much. Um, so I'm going to put that one uh, in this C category. Next up, we have a BL one-shot. This is Nagahama to be or not to be. This is probably the best BL one-shot I've ever read. Beautiful art, beautiful, uh, believable romance, and, uh, and actual feels like real connection between the characters. Um, yeah, this was just a really enjoyable one. I'm going to put this one in the A category. Next up, uh, con uh, continuing our Gakia run, we got The Pushman and Other Stories. So this is a Yoshihiro Tatsumi, probably most famously known for A Drifting Life. And this is an older 60s short story collection. This one again, good, but you know, nothing, nothing too uh, unforgettable in it. So I'm gonna put that one in the C category. And then also by the same creator, I read Black Blizzard, which is his older, this is the one's actually from the 50s more of a noir crime thriller considered to be like one of the first Gekiga stories. This one I enjoyed quite a bit more. I'm going to put this one in the B category. Next up we have uh, The Boxman. This is a surrealist story following two characters riding a scooter through a town and you got a bunch of hybrid animal human characters in it. Just a very weird, um, very weird story. Um, another one, surrealist stuff. I, you know, I like looking at the artwork, but I'm more of a standard kind of narrative um, reader. Those are what I enjoy more. So uh, I did enjoy this one, but again, I'm going to put these in C. Uh, C for me is I enjoyed them. They were fine, but you know, nothing that really blew me away. Next up, we have uh, I Wish I Was Stupid and The Pits of Hell. These are both by the same creator. These are very uh, absurd, disgusting uh, imagery in these volumes. Uh, I will read you a line from the solicit from uh, I Wish I Was Stupid, which is, if you've ever considered setting your child on fire, pooping with double buttholes or windmilling your ding dong, this book is for you. So that's kind of what you're looking forward to if you're gonna pick up these two books. They were out of print and hard to find for a long time. They recently reprinted them. Uh, so I don't know if they're still readily available, but um, worth having just for, you know, just for the wide variety of manga that's out there. If you're, if you're interested in kind of different types of manga that's out there, um, I'm going to put them in the uh, C category both. I think I like the Pits of Hell a little bit better, but yeah, they're both going in the C category. Next, we have the Troublemakers. This is a short story collection from the 70s. This one I really enjoyed. It has a lot of varied subject matter. Like with a lot of short story collections, you get a lot of very similar uh, stories set in kind of a similar time period, especially with these older ones. This one here had, uh, you know, a story about racism, high school stories, just a lot of different types of stories going on here. 
So I'm going to put this one in the B category there. Next up, we have one of the one of my favorites of the kind of alternative manga volumes that I read, and that is Ding Dong Circus. This one here, lots of different art styles. This one, surprisingly for me, way more image-based pop art kind of style and I, than traditional kind of narrative storytelling, but I really, I still really enjoyed this one. Uh, the, the full title is Ding Dong Circus and Other Stories, 1967 to 1974. Um, so this one I really enjoyed. I'm going to put this one in the A category. Next up, we have The Man Without Talent. So this is another uh, volume by Yoshihara Suge. This one is an autobiographical uh, volume, and this one kind of follows after he's kind of well-renowned and respected as kind of like this influential manga creator, he's actually broke. So he kind of does a bunch of odd jobs trying to, you know, support his family. So um, quite a bit different than the short story collections that you get here. This one here I did really enjoy. I'm going to put this one in the B category. Next up, we have Cigarette Girl. This is one of the alternative older mangas that I enjoyed probably the least. This one was a little bit more comedic, uh, slice of life comedic styling, and none of the comedy really connected with me. There was a lot of uh, stories just ending with like a joke, and I didn't really find the jokes very funny or interesting, so um, I'm going to put that one in the D category. Next up, we have The Sky is Blue with a Single Cloud. This is a, another short story collection, and this is one of the few alternative manga releases we've got in English. That's by a female creator. Short stories, great mix of styles, um, and a nice information essay in the end about the creator. So this one I am going to put in the B category here. Then we're moving on to some Yuri series. First off, we have Girlfriends, a complete collection. This is a Milk Morinaga work, who on the back of a bunch of these Yuri series I picked up said she's like a legendary Yuri creator. I've only read a few volumes by her before I started reading. This Girlfriends one is collected in these two complete collections. I read both of them. Pretty standard Yuri high school. You know, you've got a popular girl becoming friends with the with a less popular girl and then they end up getting feelings for each other so nothing to you know it was fine nothing to um you know nothing that you need to if you're looking for a yuri series it's not one i would recommend but um but it was fine i'm going to put that in the c category and then next we have a yuri series i like quite a bit more this is catch these hands this is an adult yuri series about two adult women who were both delinquents and kind of rivals in high school. They were constantly like actual fighting, fist fighting. Um, they were like kind of leaders of delinquent gangs and were uh, rivals in fighting during high school. And they just happened to run into each other as adults. Kind of one of them is still stuck in their old delinquent ways. And one of them is like moved on and it has an office job. And so they run into each other and then they end up uh, kind of not gonna go any farther, but they become friends and, and, and more goes from there. So, uh, Catch These Hands, I really enjoyed this one. I'm going to put this one in the B category, and it is a short four-volume series, so not that long. Next up, we have My the Psychic Girl. I read all of the three perfect collections of this. This is an older 80s sci-fi series about a 14-year-old girl with psychic powers being pursued, being pursued by an organization who wants to control the world. So, they already have their other some other uh, psychic children from other countries that they've already got under their control, and so they're trying to kind of use these other children to capture her. So it's got some dated stuff in it, um, you know. But um, but I did really enjoy this one. The first two volumes I enjoyed a little bit more than the third one. The third one was kind of a little bit of a letdown. I probably would have put this in the A category if it was just the first two volumes, uh, but the third one, the, uh, the finale wasn't, uh, wasn't as good as I was hoping for. So I'm going to put that one in the B category. Next up, con uh, continuing on the Yuri train, we have Chasing After Aoi Koshiba. This is a four volume Yuri series. And it is, uh, this one I really liked because we got two parallel stories. We basically have the, the story starts with the two characters on the cover here. As an adult, they are about to be going to their high school reunion. 
And so one of the characters is still pining over the girl that she loved in high school. So we have part of the story is told from that time frame, and then part of the story is going back into time when they're meeting each other and how they're interacting in high school. So this was a really cute series. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I think I probably like this one a little bit more than Catchy Tan, so I'm gonna put that one uh, up here in the B category. Next, we have The Name of the Flower. This is an old CMX series about a young woman whose parents die. So she kind of gets passed along from family member to family member, and she finally settles with a uh, young writer who is very solitary and doesn't like being around other people. Uh, if you recognize this creator, Ken Saito, he is the creator of Tales of the Tendo Family, a series that is uh, just being released in English now. This one, um, it's four volumes long. It was, it was okay. I didn't hate it or anything. Um, so I'm going to put this one probably here in the C category. Next up, we have Hana and Hina After School. This is a short three volume series, another one by Milk Morinaga. And this one I enjoyed quite a bit more than Girlfriends. Uh, just a very cute series about two very different high school girls. We have an extremely tall girl, extremely short girl, and they both secretly work at this uh, kind of just this cute shop that sells like a bunch of like cute items. I don't know how to describe it here in the U.S., like kind of like a Sanrio type store. Um, and so but according to their school, they're not allowed to have jobs. So they both work there secretly and become friends and then end up becoming more. So this was just a really cute three volume series. I'm gonna put this one uh, pretty high in the B category. I really enjoyed that one. Next, we have another uh, short three volume Yuri series. This one's mono uh, monologue, monologue woven for you. This one revolves around the theater. So we have one woman who has given up on her dreams of acting and then another woman who is aspiring to be a great actress. So this is another one, really cute. Shorter Yuri series, I'll put this one right there. Next, we have a series that I did drop. This one is The Splendid Work of a Monster Maid. I read through the first two volumes of this series. I think it was five volumes long. Beautiful art, beautiful covers, just didn't grab me. Kind of about this girl uh, going to work at, as a maid and the other maids are kind of helping her along and very episodic just didn't grab me. I got pretty bored of it um, halfway through the first volume, but I decided to read through two to give it a chance. So I'm going to put this one at the very back of C. Next up, we have My Secret Affection. This is a short sci-fi series about a world where a meteor hits Earth and makes everybody gay. So that is a very bizarre storyline. And then 30 years later, this female lead here ends up having feelings for her male friend. So she is, as she knows, the only, you know, the only person that, that was on earth when this meteor hit that is having heterosexual feelings. So very weird story. Actually ended in a place that I was not expecting. So, um, you know, I, I did enjoy it, but, um, you know, it, it wraps up pretty quickly in two volumes. So it's not something that I think I will ever reread, but I will give it a very, uh, interesting premise for a story. Next up, we have a Denpo release, and that is The Girl with the Sanpaku Eyes. I read the first five, or not the first five, all five volumes of this fluffy high school romance series. This one is in full color. It is very pink, very cute, um, but very fluffy. There's not much, there's not much substance to it. It's basically this girl, because she has Sanpaku eyes, people think she's going to be scary and she ends up really being into romance, really, you know, really wanting to get with this guy that she has a crush on. And so it's very much just her over and over again talking about how much she loves this guy. There's not a lot of uh, story to it besides that. So uh, I'm going to put this one in the B category, but um, yeah, a cute romance series. Okay, next we have What the Font, a manga guide to Western uh, typography or typeface. And this one I actually picked up because it had been recommended on the Manga Splaining podcast a long time ago. I had this in my collection for a long time. It is a one shot. And um, this one, so 
it's really just a manga guide to fonts. So each font is given a human representation to kind of talk about their origin. So there's not much story in this. I was expecting more of it to be, at least have some sort of plot and story, but this is fairly dry, just kind of every single font gets a, gets a human representation and they tell a little bit about their history. So if you're obsessed with fonts, if you're very interested in fonts, this is if you teach, you know, something to do where font would be relative this would be a good thing to have but um, other than reading the one time i don't see myself ever uh, coming back to this next up we have a the only jiro taniguchi book i read in this month and this is one of the ones i hadn't read before and that is the quest for the missing girl this is probably considered one of the lesser taniguchi works but i really enjoyed it it does kind of wrap up a little quickly that's kind of the only thing i would say negatively about it uh, but it's about a guy who goes in search for his uh, dead best friend's missing daughter. So he had made a pact with uh, with his best friend that, you know, he would take care of his family. And so when she goes missing, he goes into the uh, into the city and tries to search for her. So this one was really good. I'm going to put this one in the B category. But, you know, if I was recommending a Taniguchi to someone, this is not this wouldn't be like in the top five. Next up, we have a Hideshi Hino work. This is Panorama of Hell. This got reprinted recently by Starfruit Books. And so this is a Hino classic trademark combo of dark humor, disturbing imagery. If you're into horror, classic horror manga, I definitely pick this one up. Uh, I'm going to put this one in the A category. Next up, we have another BL one-shot. I've noticed with BL one there's a lot of BL one-shots that are high school. They're just kind of high school stories. I wish we got kind of more adult um, stories in the BL sphere because a lot of these high school ones kind of run together when I think about them. Um, my, ultra, my Ultramarine Sky is probably one of the better ones. Uh, it's about two, two friends who have always been in the same class. And then one year they end up getting separated. So it kind of reminds them how much they care about each other. So this is one of the better ones that I've read. So I'm going to put this one in the B category. Next, we have Limit. I read through all six volumes of Limit. This is a, out of, I think it's out of print vertical series, survival horror, kind of similar to Lord of the Flies or A Drifting Classroom, about a group of kids who, um, when they are, they're stranded with little hope for being found. So kind of how they devolve into, you know, being jerks to each other almost immediately after being stranded so uh, kind of very similar to lord of the flies so i'm going to put this one in the b category it got a little repetitive um but and the characters you know i think it it kind of felt like to me like they went a little a little too feral way too quick um but i'm going to put this one in the b category maybe right there Next up, we have My Pancreas Broke, But My Life Got Better. This is another in the uh, Kobe Nagata's line of diary manga. So she's released about six or seven of these, kind of talking about her addiction and then the medical issues that she's had. And so this is the most recent ones. Um, as someone who doesn't have an addictive personality myself, it is very interesting for me to see, like, you know, the effect that that can have on people's lives. And, you know, no matter, even though they know, like, they shouldn't be doing certain things they still uh, can't help but do them so i'm going to put this one in the b category next we have like i mentioned before a really forgettable high school bl this one is the white and blue between us uh this one was um, i don't i can't really can't remember anything about it just a very forgettable one i'm gonna put that one in the c category okay now we're at our last five here first off we have b strings this is a Full color, one shot, story was all over the place. I couldn't even finish this one. This one was really boring. The art was fine, you know, like I said, full color. But yeah, just just couldn't even finish it. So I'm gonna put that one in the D category. Next we have Akira Toriyama's Sandland. I had never read this one shot. And I really got into a Sandland kick after reading this. I watched the anime series that's up on Hulu. I played through the video game. It, um, you know, and I actually enjoyed both of those adaptations more than this one shot. The one shot kind of, you know, it's 
it's very much expanded with the anime and with the video game. So um, I did enjoy this, but um, but I think I enjoyed the anime and the video game both more. So I'm going to put this one in the I'm going to put this one in the B category there. Next up, we have the girl from the other side in these really nice deluxe editions. These hardcovers are probably like some of the most beautiful manga releases we've gotten in English. Very interesting fantasy series, very beautiful artwork. I feel like most people probably know what The Girl from the Other Side is about, but yeah, just a really great series. I'm going to put this one in the A category right here after Silver Spoon. Next up, we have a Yuri one-shot, and that is now loading. This one I'd never even heard of, just saw it a used place, picked it up. And it is about two women working in the video game industry. Um, this one is kind of like the hero and uh, this girl here joins this company and she's like a huge fan of this uh, woman here. So it's, you know, like I said, with a lot of these one shots, they're kind of rushed because they kind of have to tell their story all in, uh, you know, all in this one volume. So this one was okay. Nothing, nothing spectacular. I'm going to put this one probably like right there. And then the last thing here, we have Sweat and Soap. I read through all 10 volumes of this Another Office Romance series. This one I had kind of, I didn't even think about picking this series up until it had been completed and I had heard so many good things about it. Uh, mainly because the premise of the series and like the cover of this volume one just seemed like it was just gonna be some creepy um, romance series about this creepy boss. But it's not like that at all. It's a very weird premise. You know, you have a woman who has sweating problems. She works at a perfume company and the male perfume designer really likes her scent and becomes kind of obsessed with her scent. So, and they end up becoming a couple. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a very sweet office romance series, probably one of the best romance series I've read in manga, but you just have to get around the fact that the opening premise is pretty weird. So, I'm going to put that one in the A category, and uh, that was it. Okay, so that was everything I read in the time period of March through June of 2024. As you can see, only one in the S category, but lots of A's, lots of B's. Very few things here in the D category that I just flat out didn't enjoy. If you have any thoughts, any disagreements, any agreements with how I ranked anything, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I am, I think, only four or five subscribers away from a thousand, so getting pretty close. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next manga video. Thanks.